All right, electrical um, SMEs or experts or gurus, whatever you want to call yourselves. Okay, so um, you're going to start out with the breadboard. Um, your uh, group leader will uh, go with the teacher and collect all the supplies and they will bring it to you. So be patient um, while you're waiting for that. Uh, you'll be watching the video. So um, they'll be bringing you the breadboard and re uh, resistors and a whole bunch of LEDs, okay? So I have a bunch here. All right, so a bunch of LEDs and resistors. That's all you're gonna need at first. Eventually they're gonna get you the, the rest of the board with the Arduino on it and stuff, okay? So just work with the breadboard at first and then um, by the time you're done with the breadboard, they should have the, uh, the rest of the project to you while they're working on other things, okay? Now, let's look at this real quick. Um, I'm going to go through this because you can always come back to this part of the video and look at this. Um, also, I, I have plan to have this in my room. Um, but if, if you have a different teacher, you might not have this available to you. Um, actually, I think it would be cool if you were to draw this yourself so that you know what's going on. And um, OK, so what I have here are the LEDs. So here's the LED right here with the red, the green, and the blue, and the ground pins, okay? So you, the, the, the key here is that you plug all of them in the same way. Have all the reds uh, facing one way, or all the blues facing one way. It doesn't matter as long as you know that they're all the same. I've had many people mess up because they just stuck them in there, and you have a 50-50 chance of getting them right or wrong, and they just, they'd always have two or three that were wrong. Anyway, so... Um, notice how uh, I'm not going into the this E section. I'm going into the D. That leaves room for this resistor to come up and tag in behind the blue. Okay, that's the way I do it. There's lots of other ways to wire this, but this is the way that I like to wire it so that all the colors are on one side um, of the of the trough there, and then the ground is on this side. It just lets me. Uh, I'm able to see. Um, which one's red, which one's blue, and which one's green, uh, just by looking at it without having to unplug it and look at which which leg is longer, like this one, okay? Anyway, um, you'll notice that on the breadboard, there are places on the rails that don't have holes, okay? And I represent those by these black spots. And um, so every once in a while, you'll find that your re resistor is going to run right into one of those, just bend it over and plug it into the nearest one. Okay. They don't have to be perfectly in line. Um, all these ones have to be in the same rail and all the reds have to be together and all the greens have to be together. That's why I have this color coded. All right. So your key is to just, you know, you, you have something like you, you got this far with the videos before uh, lessons, all of the 10 lessons and uh, you, and we weren't being very particular about how the resistors went in there. So we're going to be a lot more picky now, okay, because we're professional electrical people now. Um, what you want to do is um, you might need to start over if you have the wrong resistors because I want you to use these uh, 200 ohm resistors. And uh, they're obviously way too long. So how do we figure out the exact length to make them? Well, let's do two of them, and you hopefully can do the rest. All right. So these ones go from the blue, which is the top one there. Okay. All right. So I'm going from there all the way over there. The resistor is it's too long. Okay. So I want to keep it flat. Now, how much... How much goes inside the breadboard? So that's what you got to figure out. So stick it into it so I can't go anymore and bend it over and figure out what that distance is and always use that distance. Okay. Anyway, but it's too long, so I'm just going to cut off a little bit and I'll do it again. I'm going to stick it in there. Come on. And I'm going to bend it over. Oops. 
Okay, so bend it over. And I'm going to look here. How much more do I need? I need to get to that blue rail, but I don't want to cut it exactly with it. I want it just a, a little bit longer. Okay, so and I make a mental note. How much do I need to cut off? Well, about that much. And you can use one of these pliers, or you can use one of these pliers. The These are strippers, or wire strippers. They have a wire cutter right here, but they're really really bad so only use those if absolutely necessary what's cool about these one these ones is if you figure out where on them is the perfect amount you can put it in there and then uh, bend so it's a nice perfect and you can't see that there you go nice perfect bend okay and you can do the same thing on the other side a nice perfect bend and there you go, you have a nice resistor ready to go. And so I would plug it in there and plug it in on the other side. And at first, you might not have it be perfect, but uh, you'll get close. So once you, once you figure out what this distance is, it's the same for all of them. So you can take it back out, straighten it up, and then copy paste that to seven more and do all of them the same. Every single one of these resistors is going to be the same length. And same with all the red ones, they're just gonna be a tad longer than all your green ones, okay? So figure out what those three lengths are, um, mass produce those and go crazy, okay? And stick. remember to stick all the LEDs in the exact same way, put them right next to each other, and uh, that should work out. Okay, so um, after you do the breadboard, uh, by that time, hopefully your your builder has finished building this, your mechanical person, and you can ask for the Arduino and you know the board, and th they'll need to take the breadboard away from you just for a little bit to attach. Uh, hey, you can go help. Why not? Anyway, so uh, you'll screw those on there, and then this is right by it. And so you're going to need to make wires that are the perfect length to go from your Arduino to your breadboard. You're going to need eight for your LEDs and three for your colors. Okay? And so I'm going to show you how to use the, the uh, wire stripper. So here it is. There's, there's different kinds of wire strippers. This is a really nice one. You might have different ones at your school, but here's the one that I have. So what you do, see, watch the action here. See how it goes like this? And on the back side, okay. So this jaw comes down and then the other one grabs and then they pull, okay. And so what you want to do is make sure you're watching this side right here so you strip off the perfect amount, which is the amount that goes down inside the breadboard. So you got to remember what that distance is. I've had a lot of students don't, that don't strip enough and they're not going down into the breadboard enough and they don't get a good enough connection. Then I have people that strip off too much and then they have bare wires touching other bare wires causing uh, a short circuit, which makes not good things happen. So um, you got to get good at this. Okay, so you're gonna strip it off like that, all right? And then you're gonna turn on, you know, you're gonna measure it, and make it the right length, okay? So you make it the right length, but you gotta add, add like an inch because you have to have like a half an inch on each side to go down inside the breadboard. Okay, so whatever the distances you need, make sure you add a little bit. I'll show you one more strip here. I'm going to put it up high so you can see, and boom. If you strip off too much, you can always trim it back a little bit with one of these, okay? Anyhow, um, sometimes instead of stripping off, it slides the whole sheath down if you're doing a really short wire, so be, be careful about that. Okay, so that's how you do that one, and 
you're going to wire uh, eight like this. The one on the very end, uh, at the very tip, is going to get wired to zero, and you work your way up to eight at the bottom one. Then you're going to have your three colors. I do my, um, this one's kind of a long, too long. I should have made that shorter, but I was doing this real fast. Uh, this one's the blue, uh, not blue, this one's, yeah, that's blue. It's a black wire, but that's blue. This is a green wire. Looks blue on the video, but it's green. And then this is the red. Okay. Now, that's going to take you a little bit of time because you have to make your own wires. Not too bad. This one right here, these are already pre-made for you. And then this right here, that is your um, Hall Effect sensor. It detects a magnet. Okay. Now, in the handle, there's the magnet. Now, what's interesting about the Hall Effect sensor is it only detects the magnet, uh, it only detects north on one side and south on the other. And I don't know which side is which on this magnet unless I have a compass or something weird. Okay, so if I try to, if I wave it by it, nothing happens. But if I turn it over and I wave it by it, all of a sudden it flashes and it's doing its job. So you got to make sure when you install this that you bend bend it up so that the side that detects the magnet is facing it. So every time this, the handle goes by, it will detect the light. Okay. And then just use some masking tape and tape it in place. All right. Uh, so if you, I, I've had some people accidentally knock these out cause they hold the handle way up here and their thumb keeps hitting that. So when you hold these and spin it, hold way out here. Um, you could put some hot glue on there to make it more uh, secure, but use tape at first because you're testing it and you don't want to glue things without knowing for sure it's working. All right, where do you plug it in though? Well, let's look at my diagram here. So here's the, here's the Arduino right here. So this shows the zero through seven. So there's your eight lights. Remember zero counts. So that's, that's really eight things there. Then nine, 10 and 11 are, the ones that get your red, green, and blue. Okay. Then on the other side of your Arduino over here, these are the labels. Okay. A zero. And then you have a ground. There's two of them. So you can pick either one. And then there's a five volts. There's also another one up here, but I, I like to just do these three cause they're the closest ones to each other. Um, and then you just kind of go every other one. See how there's a blank there and a blank there. So that's, that's what I do to help me remember where to put them. What you want to do is look at your um, magnet sensor and there's a side of it that has bevels and that's what these shaded marks mean. So if you look at it with that side towards you facing you, the one on the left goes to five volts. The one in the middle goes to ground and the one on the right goes to a zero. And you just got to get these wires that are pre-made for you. They have sockets on one side, and pins on the other. Okay. So grab one of these, they come in big ribbons and you just have to rip off a group of three and you're good to go. Okay. Um, what else is there? I think that's about it. I mean, wiring is, is not that bad. Um, what, once you're done wiring, you need to design some images, get with your, um, mechanical person, your leader, that they had a lesson on how to do that in their video, or you can watch that video yourself and skip to that part and watch it and learn how to design images for this to display. Okay. Um, make sure that you follow this. If for some weird reason you have something go wrong with one of your pins, we do have a few extras. We have eight and uh, 12 and 13. So if something is wrong with one of these, Use one of the other ones, but tell the programmer that you changed it so that they can make the modifications necessary in the program. Okay. Um, the program is super easy to change. So if you need to do something like that, like somebody accidentally broke a wire off inside of one of these um, and you can't get it out, we can easily switch to another um, pin and it's super easy to change the program. Uh, that 
should be everything, um, unless I think of something, then I'll come right back. Ah, I knew I'd think of something. Okay, so there is one more thing I want to talk to you about. Um, that is um, that the fact that the, the color red on these LEDs doesn't seem to be as bright as the other two colors. So if you need to make the other two colors dimmer to compensate for a dim red, uh, you can, instead of going through and changing all of your resistors, what you can do is um, use a series circuit. So let's say you wanna fix green. I'm gonna move green just over here, okay? And then I'm gonna put a resistor in the same same row there and then go over to the green row so now whenever we power green it has to go through two resistors to turn on the light therefore it's going to make the light just a little bit dimmer okay um, and i have different values of resistors for that so you can fine tune it okay so you do it for that one and you might do it for the blue one as well uh, but red is usually a, a dim color and sometimes we have to just tweak it a little bit to make it so that all three colors are more balanced. All right. Also, if you do run into problems like this or you have a wire broken off or you accidentally put in the LED backwards, I, I need everybody to keep a journal of everything that goes right or wrong, not right, but wrong, everything that goes wrong and how you fixed it and made it right. Um, and uh, I give that journal to your group leader because they're putting together some documentation. Also, you know, take pictures or remind your group leader to take pictures of what you've done each day and, and uh, describe what you do so that if, if you were to want to do it again, you could look at the notes and do it again and avoid the problems. That is all. <laughs>